Our next speaker for the day brings with him another powerful story. Mr. V.S. Sudhakar is the co-founder and executive director of Big Basket, India's largest online grocery company. Big Basket delivers 3 million orders per month and also sells 5,000 5, Kirana stores spread over eight cities. He is also an angel investor and was an advisor to multiple enterprises across sectors. Please join me in welcoming on stage Mr. V.S. Sudhakar. This session is brought to you by Nagaratar. 2011, we started the next journey, which is really big basket. So I think things were a lot better now in terms of the environment. Uh, internet was obviously, penetration was much better. But one thing which we realized, and we again had done a little, uh, I would say, under, under pitching or under reading of the whole thing, was the status of online grocery worldwide. I'm not talking India. India, of course, nothing was there. Or there were a few startups, but nobody had really done anything which could be called of any scale. So we went and met VCs, and these are all like top, top rung VCs. Fortunately, we had the, the base now. People would kind of the credibility was there that we have built a business, sold a business, so obviously people will be willing to listen to you. But the one thought, thing which kept coming back, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this company, which, which was really one of the reasons why the whole internet bubble burst. It was a company called Webvan. So Webvan was the, the poster child of e-commerce in late 1998-99. They raised about a billion dollars in those days. They raised a billion dollars before they actually did any real business. And they pumped all of that into technology and into massive automated warehouses. And the company went bust end of 2000. In 2012, when we started making a pitch, which is 12 years after that, the one question which came to us is, if Webvan couldn't do it, how the hell are you going to do it? And it was a tough question to answer because people would say, hey, you know what? Webvan went bust. They, had, they raised a billion dollars and went bust. Nobody else has really cracked it, including Amazon. Because Amazon, even in 2012, was still scratching the surface. They were just doing one experiment in Seattle. They hadn't done really grocery in a big way. So the whole question was, why do you think you will succeed in India when people have not done it globally? So, Ganesh had only one answer for all that. He said, boss, we just need one guy who believes our story. <laughs> we don't care how many people don't believe our story. Finally, we found one guy who believed our story. And fortunately, we found that pretty early. So we launched in December 2011, and we got the first fund raised in February, March of 2012. So one of the good things that happened to us in this journey was we had the money early. And that really, and we also said, fortunately, everybody said, we will do this differently. The first one year, we stayed in only one city, only Bangalore. We went deep. We just said, let's first understand how to run this business really well. So one of the things we decided to do was, Let's set some real high milestones that we want to achieve. So we said, let's figure out who is the best in the, in the business globally. And interestingly, this company, Ocado, in 2012, a lot of VCs used us. Who's Ocado? Never heard of them. And this is a company which is currently valued at about three or four billion in the UK. It's a pure play online grocery company, possibly the only really successful company, at least in the early part of 2010, 2011. So we said Ocado is a very good company, and fortunately publicly listed company, so we had all the data. So we set some goals. So we said, let's figure out what is their on-time delivery percentage. Let's look at what is their quality of delivery in terms of the fill rate, as they call it, and what is the range they have, and what size of business are they at. So we said, let's set this as our goal. And we went after it. And interestingly, when you cut to September 2018, we have pretty much matched all the numbers they had. In fact, in some cases, fortunately, we are a little better off. And that really happened because when we set 
out on this journey. We said we are not building another company. We said let's build something which is truly outstanding where we really feel proud of what we have done and what we have been able to achieve. And set some really high milestones and go after it. And therefore we said let's build something which takes a little time, doesn't matter. So first one year we didn't move out of Bangalore. We just built Bangalore business, really focused on the back end, focused on technology for the back end. So we had a the delivery person who would go to deliver had a delivery app from day one. The other big call we took, which I will talk about a little later, is fruits and vegetables. We said this is the toughest category to crack. Even for physical retail, fruits and vegetables is the toughest simply because of the shelf life and because of the fact that supply chain is still a very, very tough one in an Indian context. So we said we'll do fruits and vegetables from day one. So some tough calls we took very early. And we had the backing in terms of the funding to be able to do that. So that was a big plus for us. We didn't have to really go every three months to figure out what, when the next fund is uh, required. We did that. So we, when we set out, therefore, we also said two things. We said, there's no sense in saying we'll be the largest online company, grocery company. It didn't make any sense because there was nobody else. I mean, it's like saying that I'm going to win this race where I'm the only person running. So it doesn't really help. So we said, let's set a goal that we are going to be among the top three grocery chains in India, whether online, offline, combination, doesn't matter. We said, that's one clear goal that we wanted to set. And obviously, goes without saying that we should be the online leader. We also said that we should really build a profitable business. And one of the re ways to do that is to ensure that there is a lot of private label. Just for anybody who is not familiar with private label, private label is basically products that you sell that is not necessarily somebody else's brand, which is your own brand. That's what typically is called a private label. So we set out on this journey. And I think one of the things which has worked well, because of the sheer focus that we put into how we build this business, the, one of the things which has worked very well for us is the retention. I'm just giving you a quick sense. Some of these are, again, not really Indian companies. We are talking about international companies. So this is the retention cohort, which means if X number of people come in in the first month, after one year, after two years, after three years, how many people continue to shop with you? Which really is a very key you know, determinant of what your profitability is going to be. And these are all very, very good international names. So therefore, we really said that, OK, let's keep the focus on quality of execution, the quality of the process, and make sure that we build a business that is fundamentally profitable, which has kind of led us to a point where, where we are today. So we launched in December 2011. We started with just one city. For the first full year, we had just one city. Then for the next two years, we were in just two more cities. We just wanted to get a sense of when I expand to two more cities, what are the kind of issues that I'm going to face? What kind of elements that we need to take care of? So we went to only Mumbai and Hyderabad. So we were in just Bangalore, Mumbai, and Hyderabad for the first three years of our existence. And then in just one year, we went to 25 cities. <laughs> so once we realized that we've got the model right, we've got the whole process right, we've got the technology right, we said, now we are ready. So then we expanded to 25 cities. And Per se, we've been in 25 cities for the next three years. We may add just one more, which is Cochin. We just said for some reason we had not included Cochin in this, so we're just planning to add Cochin now. But otherwise, we're not planning to add any more. So the whole focus is to go deep and really focus on ensuring that, like for instance, one of the key metrics for us is the fact that 85% of the orders that we get in any month is coming from an existing customer, which really means that your repeatability of the business is what really makes it worthwhile. So, but what also happens is one, one real complex element that comes for our business compared to any other e-commerce business is on an average, this is, I'm talking average, each order has about 23 items. And customers typically order 35 times a year. So the number of touch points for us compared to somebody who's selling a mobile phone is dramatically different. So which fundamentally means the consistency is crazy. I mean, you have to be consistent day after day after day, which is really what makes this business far more difficult. So many times people ask us, 
Amazon is going to come. Flipkart is going to come. What are you guys going to do? So don't worry, I'll let them come. <laughs> because this is not one of those businesses that you're going to just do it like that. It's a, it's a tough business to do. And which is not to say it's impossible. For sure it is not. But what really makes it tough in our Indian context is the fact that consistency needs process focus and process implementation. And as Indians, I'm mean, sorry to say, I think that's one area where we're extremely weak at. We are desperately weak at implementing processes because I think we are all very individualistic. Even our delivery guy, he believes, he knows how to do delivery, delivery better than what the technology tells him. So you'll always make some side cuts. So somebody was, yesterday was in a, this one where the Israeli, I think, uh, trade consul or somebody, she was just saying, interestingly, even people coming from outside India, the first thing that hits them is, she was talking about Jugad. Of course, this is in Chennai. <laughs> so Chennai, I don't know whether everybody knows Jugad. Jugad is like, you know, shortcuts. <laughs> so we are all a very Jugadu society, right? We, for us, everything, let's figure out a shorter way to do the same thing. A process fundamentally needs you to be steadfast. If it means that the process says you have to go straight, you have to go straight. You cannot take the shortcut. To get this down into, now we are at about 15,000 people. At 15,000 people, getting them all to think like this. So one of the, I'll, give, I'll give you a very simple example. One of the things that I personally used to be very upset about, we have these uh, deliveries which happen in crates. Because we didn't want to use carry bags because we said environmentally it's friendly to say, avoid the carry bag. So it comes in a crate, the crate is locked with a tag. So the guy comes with a cutter. So one of the issues we used to have is the guy will forget the cutter. So I still remember one of the early customers, she sent one really upset mail saying, this guy asked me for my scissor because he had to cut this and the scissor broke. <laughs> Okay, then we said, please do one thing. Every hub have some extra cutters. Nobody should go without a cutter. And we gave them the pouch, so the guy puts it in the pouch. With all that, they will still forget. But thankfully, over a period of time, training, training, you know, finally they get to a point where they're. But cutting is fine. Now, when you cut, most of our houses we don't necessarily wear footwear in the inside the house, and especially in the kitchen. And when you cut, you leave behind the tags on the floor. So we used to tell these guys, pick up that and put it back into the crate. So that you don't leave the tag on the floor. Because when a customer, because it happened to me and that's when I realized, this is a very small thing, but it makes a difference to the way customer perceives you. Because it hurt my foot when I was walking and I said, my God, how come we didn't think of this? So we told these guys, trained them to say, Pick it, put it back. If you can't put it back into the crate, put it back into your pouch. Bring it back. Don't leave the tag. A lot of these small, small, small things really finally leads to what the customer experiences with you. And to do this consistently, day after day, 36 times a year, when you have 23 items in a order, is really what makes the whole business a lot more complicated than what it seems. But what makes it more interesting also is the fact that this whole F&B part. But that's one thing that I personally feel very thrilled about and what I think is a massive opportunity in terms of making a small difference to the society. So today, in Bangalore, if you're buying from Big Basket fruits and vegetables, 80% of what you buy is coming directly from a farmer. So what we have done is we have set up what we call as collection centers. There are about 25 collection centers across the country. And we buy from a farmer. But what is more critical, and this is really where I think some of these small, small elements really make a difference. So one of the things we decided up front, we will not pay cash. And this is interesting because you're talking about a rural area, a farmer who may not necessarily but thanks to this, uh, the government, central government had this huge scheme about wanting everybody to open a bank account. It worked beautifully for us. So we told all the farmers, sorry, if you want to work with me, you have to open a bank account. And we explained to them why. We said, if you open a bank account, 
when you make the delivery, you don't need to come and beg for your money from anybody, including my own employee. Because when I have 25 collection centers, it's not easy for me to ensure that everybody in every collection center will behave in a very honest way or with the humility that we expect out of what we should do. So we said, you give the delivery, the moment it enters the system, you don't need to talk to anybody. The money will hit your bank. Today it hits the bank within 48 hours. Every farmer, every day. And that happens only because of the technology. So really use the technology power to ensure that we can make that small difference. And the other good thing which happens is as you get closer to the farmer, because you're cutting out at least two or three layers, the farmer tends to make about 6 to 7 percent more. So the, as we've gone into this journey, we've realized that as we become bigger, so we've been very quintessentially startup people. Many times, uh, Hari Vipal and I, we keep saying, I think we are way past our expiry date. <laughs> I think this is not the size we want to be running. But the one thing which keeps us going, there are two things, in fact, I'll just talk about the other thing. One thing is the fact that I think there's an opportunity to really make a difference to a lot of people. The second thing is the 15,000 people. So for instance, one of the things we do is we have, a, we have created a trust. Fortunately, the board was also very supportive. So we said we'll create a trust for all our employees where we can, one, we do a life insurance for all of them. I'm talking about employees at the lowest level. The people who go come deliver uh, the goods or people who do the picking, packing. And we said we'll create a trust where we take care of life insurance. Second, we take care of education of either the employee himself or his sister or his brother, somebody in his family who feels they could make use of this. We have really been building this out and we are kind of pumping some money into that fund because in a small way you also are able to do some, make some difference. And it's not really charity because what it does for you is it buys back some level of ownership from that class of people. So it's not that the moment you start thinking charity and therefore I am doing some great stuff, it's all crap. You're basically doing it because it's good for you and there's nothing wrong because it's a, it's a win-win. You win, they win. Same thing with farmers. They make 7% more, so they win. They get the money in 48 hours, they win. But we win because we get the right quality at the right price coming straight to us fresh. So this is really something we have put a lot of focus on. We really feel very strongly that this is. And the other thing which we also do is we have employed these agronomists in each of these collection centers. And the whole idea is to see slowly whether we can move many of these farmers to organic farming practices. So for a second, not worrying about the certification because that's a little expensive. A lot of farmers say, I don't want to get certified because I just don't want to waste so much money on it. But if you're able to slowly over a period of time tell customers that while I don't have a certification, today for instance we already sell what we call organically grown. We say we don't want you to pay a premium but this is organically grown. We are saying it. If you trust me, take it. Otherwise you assume it's not organic but at least we know that it's a good stuff going to the customer. So I think a lot of these small, small elements that we are able to make a difference in terms of how we... And what this hopefully leads us to is a strong private label, which is really one of the key vision that we had. So for instance, fresh fruits and vegetables for a physical retail chain typically runs at about 6 to 7% of their business. For us, it runs at about 18% of our business. So one of the things which is a big change for us is the fact that a customer buys a fruit and vegetable, which is otherwise considered to be possibly the most difficult thing to buy online because I have to see, I have to touch, I have to feel. How do I know you guys will do a better job than me? And so on and so forth. So slowly that trust needs to build. And it's not an easy job. It's a long, long journey that we have to get onto. And what also we do is use technology in the entire, the whole spectrum is built around technology. So many times my technology team asks me, are we a technology company? are we a retail company? It depends on who is asking. If it's an investor, it's a technology company. <laughs> if it's a customer, it's a retail company. <laughs> because for a customer, I would rather buy from a retail company than a technology company. 
but an investor obviously tends to give you a better valuation if you say you're a technology company. So we are a technology company. <laughs> so internally we know we are a retail company because our DNA now is a retail company. So technology is more a beast that we tame and make that beast work for us. And for us that's very, very critical because we never let technology drive us. We drive technology. So we use it across multiple things. And a lot of these analytics and what we call as you know, the, the big data is, is so vital for us because uh, as we get better at it, it's starting to make a difference to how we see trends, what's happening here, why is this buying not happening, why is this customer going away, why is this customer not buying this. So you're starting to do a lot of work around how to manipulate the data. And also, more importantly, we have built what we call as a brand intelligence, which is really a service we provide to an FMCG company, which with the same questions are what a Horlicks guy needs to know. The same question is what, you know, needs to know. I've got the thing on the clock, so I'll move. I have just one more slide, so therefore I'm going to. So I was just saying we are way past the expiry date in terms of the size. So how do we ensure that we continue to think it's a startup? And we keep telling all our employees, don't get fooled by the size of this business or size of the office and all that. We are a startup. So we already decided that if it needs be, we will disrupt our own business. So we have got into this milk subscription. We are saying, is there a way in the morning, along with the milk, you get your fruit and your vegetable which was harvested yesterday at 6 in the morning, free of delivery cost. Okay? That's really where we're moving. So we just started this process. We just bought two companies, which will become our base, base stations. And from there, we are just moving it up. And we're doing some interesting things in terms of a kiosk or a digital vending machine, which works with an app, which is already set up in about 25 apartment complexes. And the goal is to get to about 3,000 such machines, which are 24-hour machines where all your essentials are available. So that the whole idea is to say when, it, when you think of grocery, there's only one place you go to. 